All right, welcome to photosynthesis. Plants they cover the world, they make it pretty. I wish there were more. If every one of you were out there and went to plant a couple of trees, wouldn't hurt. Anyways, um, to this chapter, we talk about the reverse of cell respiration, which is the chapter we just did. And you know that the origin of life's power on Earth uh, although there are some life forms which use the energy of the core and chemical energy from other compounds, these are essentially the chemotrophs, the majority of life on Earth is solar powered. And basically, like you see in this drawing here, it is the light of the sun captured through photosynthesis in any of these phototrophs that you see on the screen. Um, there is going to go ahead and create the sugar or the end organic compounds which are going to be powering up life. So phototrophs like the, f the plant that you see here on the top left, the algae like the Silglena algae that has flagella and cilia all over the place, uh, the green algae or cyanobacteria even which is not featured here in this drawing. All of these phototrophs are performing this endergonic, anabolic, endothermic reaction that builds glucose at the expense of the energy of the sun. And then this glucose will then go on to be consumed um, to create energy through cellular respiration. And this is something that either the pho phototrophs or the heterotrophs will do. And in fact, a lot of people get confused and think that plants don't breathe, uh, don't do cellular respiration. All life forms are pretty much uh, glycolysis based. They all basically catabolize glucose to get the exothermic and exergonic reaction, the energy to power up the anabolic process of life, like we discussed in cellular respiration. The only difference is that these phototrophs can make their own sugars, but it's the burning of sugar that actually produces the energy. All right? And think about it um, for a plant, for example, uh, only the cell part, that the mesophyll cells, which are in the plant, leaf actually can do photosynthesis. The rest of the plant needs the sugar just like you and me and even the mesophylls themselves, uh, cells themselves, also need the sugar during the night to produce uh, energy. So if you don't make sugar, plants will die and plants breathe and do cell respiration just like you and me. They consume oxygen, they consume glucose to make energy. So that's a very important point before we start. And in this opening here, you also see a photocell. Um, uh, basically a device that is used by humans to, to collect power from the sun for elect electricity and I put it here because it's definitely a very close relationship to what's happening inside the chloroplast. The chloroplast is like this photovoltaic cell. Uh, remember when we talk about cell respiration we talked about the fact that the majority of human engines are actually less efficient than the cell respiration process is because burning is very disorganized while the the systematic um, oxidation reduction reactions and transfer of electrons of cell respiration slowly but surely capture the majority of the possible energy for the glucose which stores about 38 percent of the energy of glucose is actually released and used for anabolic reactions now when it comes to photosynthesis uh, plants and algae are not that efficient all right only about 23 percent to 25 percent of the energy that actually hits the cell is actually converted into electrical chemical power. Um, this is not so much a problem in um, transferring the energy, it's more of a problem of capturing that energy. Now, human photocells photo are actually slightly better and they can capture a little more energy than that. So that's once that we've gotten actually improved on life systems. Um, but anyways, this is photosynthesis. Now, clearly there's a very close relationship between photosynthesis and cell respiration. Uh, the chloroplasts are consuming glucose uh, sorry, are making glucose and oxygen at the expense of water and carbon dioxide, which are in turn produced by the mitochondria when it burns that glucose in the presence of the oxygen. So you can see that one depends on the other, but that the overall result is that the light energy of the sun, the kinetic energy of the sun, gets transferred through this cycle to chemical energy that's actually used for powering up anabolic processes. But remembering that this energy is basically originally from the sun and it's on the phototrophs that that's going to be happening. I also put on the screen here the carbon cycle to remind you that um, of the function of plants and animals in this carbon cycle that animals are putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and putting oxygen out of the atmosphere and then the plants do both. Look at that. Plants do cell respiration and photosynthesis. All right. And in fact, uh, 
another part of the karma cycle is um, decomposition, which has nothing to do with any of these processes, but and we're going to talk about that later in the year, but decomposition is also going to put carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But there's a very close relationship here between the heterotrophs and phototrophs in the sense of mitochondria versus chloroplasts. Now remember that even the plants act like heterotrophs in the sense that they do need to burn sugar. Um, the only difference is that they will go ahead and make their own sugar, which is why they're called autotrophs. And the special type of autotrophs that use light in this case are phototrophs. All right. Now, photosynthesis is actually the exact opposite of cellular respiration. So you're going to get six carbon dioxides, combine them with water to make sugar and oxygen. So exactly the opposite. If you were to go this way, you would basically be doing cellular respiration. Now, notice that there's something funky here. Uh, you actually need 12 molecules of water to, to, to build each glucose molecule. But during the process, you actually end up making six molecules of water back. So that if you do the math here, it's technically you, all you're doing is, you, is you're consuming six waters overall. So in a way, it looks just like cell respiration does, 666 in one glucose. All right? But um, we're going to be talking about where this water is consumed and produced later in the lecture. All right? Now, the... Like cell respiration, glucose involves the carrying of electrons. So you're going to have electron carriers like ATP and also another special electron carrier um, on photosynthesis called the NADP. So it's a, it's, a, it's a cousin of the NAD that is used during uh, cell respiration, but this one is NADP, P as in photosynthesis because it has an extra phosphate group. But it's an easy way to remember because it's got a P for photosynthesis there. And when it becomes charged, it's, it goes ahead and adds a hydrogen that, just like the NAD does. So both of these electron carriers here will be important for our, our process. And to learn more about ATP, please refer back to the, the cell metabolism and bioenergetics lectures, as well as the cell respiration lecture, where I talk about ATP in a little more detail. But remember that the cell can actually only use ATP. But throughout the process of photosynthesis, the cell will have to produce both these electron carriers and then consume them sub subsequently in later processes of photosynthesis. So this is all very important. Remember, these are the electron carriers during the photosynthesis process. Now, what is actually happening to photosynthesis is another example of those age-old oxidation reduction reactions, just like cell respiration was. So what is happening here in any oxidation reduction reaction is that the energy stored in one atom is transferred to another as the electrons move from one atom to the other, right? So basically, electrons are given or stolen from this atom by the other. So this is like the oxidizing agent which causes this atom to lose its electrons and steals it from them. So it's oxidizing agent because it's the one that's causing the other one to be oxidized. And vice versa here. This is the reducing agent because it's causing this guy to be reduced. Now typically these reduced these agents will be something that acts like a metal. The, the people on the left side of the periodic table, they want to give up electrons. And reducing agents would typically be things that act like nonmetals, which like to take electrons, like oxygen, the most common re uh, oxidizing agent, often reduced, and which is why we call it oxidation, because it's the most common thing doing this. Now, what is actually happening doing oxidation reduction reactions? Um, these atoms have electrons floating around this, this, uh, the atom in, in energy layers. So in one atom, maybe we're going to have the nucleus here, and you're going to have this electron going around the atom. Now, some atoms want to get rid, some ad atoms want to get rid of these extra electrons because they're metals, and so they don't really want, they don't really care about the electron too much. So these electrons will typically be far away from the nucleus. They'll be like, get rid of it. But since they're far away from the nucleus, in order to stay in that orbit, they have to spin even faster, which means that they usually have a lot of energy. Now, usually the ones which are receiving the electrons, like oxygen, are smaller atoms where the electrons are really close to the nucleus, and so they have less energy. So when an electron go goes from um, a high energy level, far from the nucleus, to another atom, where it's going to stay in closer to the, to the nucleus, what's end up happening is it, go, is it goes from a high state of, of electricity to a low state of electricity. And as it jumps from high to low, some of this energy is released as heat. And that's, that's the energy that the cell traps to make to turn ADP into ATP. And since it's charging ATP, doing ATP synthesis, what it's doing is reducing ATP. And remember that a reduction reaction is actually 
charging the atom, it's adding electrons to the atom, so it's actually giving it more electricity, more electron potential, it's actually charging it. Now, when ATP is destroyed by ATP hydrolysis, back into ADP, you're actually losing those electrons, releasing the energy, going back to a high electron state, energy state, which is basically oxidation. So here's an example again of oxidation reduction reaction. And this time, I actually explain you why and how the cell gets energy out of this. Because basically what's happening, the electrons are moving from high, from uh, atoms that have a low affinity for electrons to uh, atoms that have high affinity for electrons or highly electronegative atoms, and which actually causes the electrons to be closer to the nucleus and go to a lower state of energy, and this energy gets released. So I hopefully... That make, makes a better point for you. Now, what is actually happening in, 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 in photosynthesis happens in two steps, okay? You have the light reaction and what's called the light-independent reaction. So you have two little things. Now, in the light reaction, it's going to involve two photosystems, photosystems two and one, as well as electron transfer chains. Um, and basically what's happening in the light reaction is that energy of the sun powers the transference of electrons from water into the, these electron carriers. So electrons from water are going to end up in electron carriers here, which are basically charged. So uh, water is being basically right here. Water is losing electrons and therefore it's becoming oxidized back to, back to oxygen. All right. Now, when that happens, you actually split this water to make oxygen. Notice that. All right. That means that that age-old myth that plants get carbon dioxide and convert into oxygen, that's, that's not really true. Now, it's true that plants consume carbon dioxide and do release oxygen doing photosynthesis. Remember, they do cell aspiration, so they do the opposite as well. But really, where is the oxygen coming from? It's coming not from the, the actual um, carbon dioxide, but it's coming from the water. So all the air you breathe, all the oxygen you breathe is actually originally coming from the water. All right, so it's it, this is what's happening during the light reaction. Now, um, what happens during the dark reaction, or the I don't like to call it dark, as it can happen during the day or during the night, but it doesn't depend on light. The energy that was stored these electron carriers is used to power a machine called the Calvin cycle, after the science that was discovered it, or the carbon fixation cycle, where carbon is fixated or trapped from the air into macromolecules such as sugar. So the point of the dark reaction is to transfer from the air carbon dioxide into molecules like sugar. Now, that means that carbon dioxide gets trapped into uh, sugar. And this is a state where you're going to go from a low energy to high energy because glucose is full of electrons. All the electrons are there. So this is going to be a reduction. So what's actually happening during photosynthesis, if you think about it, is that electrons from water through the electron carriers end up being thrown into carbon dioxide. So this electron transfer that's causing this oxidation and reduction reaction. Now remember that the oxidation happens during the light. It's a light dependent reaction. While the reduction happens independent of the light, which is a light independent reaction. So it doesn't need light. All right. Now remember that the, although it's independent in the sense that can happen during the dark or during light, Technically, it needs light because it needs the electron carriers which are produced during the light reaction in order to do all of this. So, this is an overview of what's going to be happening during the photosynthesis. Remember that there's actually two separate reactions taking place. One that happens in the presence of light, one that happens whether or not there is light. During the day, plants are only doing the light reaction. During the night, they can do both, right? No, sorry. During the night, they can do only the dark reaction. But during the day, they're doing the light reaction or the dark reaction. So they can do both during the day, but during the night, they only do the dark reaction or the light independent reaction. It is the energy from the light reaction that powers the, the light independent reaction. It is the photosystems that trap the energy to split the water and send those electrons into the carriers to power up the Calvin cycle. And also remember that it, water is what gives you the oxygen. So oxygen comes from water and carbon dioxide ends up as glucose and trapped into the glucose, all right? So that is an overview of, of, of photosynthesis and its point in life. And on the next lecture, we're gonna be talking about the structures involved in photosynthesis. See you then.